Okay, looks like we're live. We are live. Yes, yes, yes. Just want to make sure everything is all right. So we're live. Um, welcome, ETM Hotep. Welcome to the Seshumani Metanetra YouTube channel. Reni Wujau. Um, shout out to the brother Omar Reed. Always uh, come hanging out, checking out, checking, checking in. Um, but I'm not alone, so I, I guess I will pass the mic. Everyone wants to introduce themselves on the panel before we uh, jump into tonight's topic. So, yeah. Hotep, my name is Tamika. Like, share, subscribe. Enjoy the show. Hotep, this is son David from Cleveland, Ohio. Enjoy the show. Hotep, Hotep, who? Rani Imiket. My name is Imiket, and welcome. All right, and again, Rani Wujau, Menib, Erimaat, and ETM Hotep, uh, Seshumani Metanetra YouTube channel. And so tonight's topic, we are going to, today is Freestyle Friday. And so we're going to, you know, do a little freestyling, but we're going to do a freestyling on a particular stila um, that was brought into discussion over the past few days. And this is a particular stila. Now, tonight's top, the show is called Time Traveling Priests of Kemet. All right. So why did I name it that? Well, this particular stila um, was focused on in a few conversations recently. But it kind of goes back to um, a statement that was made by um, the elder uh, Nfundishi, where he is actually, I believe he's standing in the Metropolitan Museum, or the Met, as people know it as, the Met Museum, giving a tour or having an entourage of people around him. And he's explaining some of the artifacts that, you know, they're walking through. And he stops at this particular stila and he explains to the people. Um, well, one, he says that a lot of people are not ready for what he teaches about it. But then he goes on to say that this particular um, stila has a priest on there with a certain outfit and quilted, made of quilted material, kind of sheer material because you, you can uh, see through it. It's the kind of material that they wore. And it's quilted at pleats and everything. And he said that, that outf the outfit allowed the priest to time travel. The outfit, along with certain words and meditation, allowed the priest to time travel. So, um, you know, we want to discuss that and talk about that and incorporate that in a freestyle uh, Friday. So, you know, right now we're just kind of warming it up. Anybody who's going to tune in, you know, get the notification alerts, give give a chance for everyone to tune in a bit. So while we do that, uh, how about anybody on the panel? You got any anything you want to um, share real quick, announcements? Um, you know, anybody getting married? Anybody's birthday is coming up? Uh, anybody expecting children or something? I mean, you know, what what's new? <laughs> same thing different day same thing different there how's, how's it down there in florida where, where you at you in daytona no i'm in palm bay it's very hot i mean i try to stay in the ac it's quiet okay. boring <laughs> can't complain about being boring though so where you live at what what is that considered um Okay, you, you know how you got the city, then you got the suburbs, but then you got what we call the boonies. Like, you, know, you, you, know. <laughs> you could you could sort of call it where I live in the area, the boonies. <laughs> just, <laughs> just. Okay, the boonies. Yeah. Wait, okay. you call that like with a whole bunch of like trees and just stuff like that? That's what you call the boonies? Well, I mean, the suburbs have trees and stuff, but the boonies is like, it's very spaced out. Like, like you, you gotta right. 
like one house here and then then yes that's our what my area yeah like in other words if you if you ride you you can't ride on e on 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 you know an empty tank of gas like you you pass one gas station you're in trouble that's that's the boonies like gas stations are kind of spread out (laughs) right okay okay so that's good but you said how so i hope you you know you're getting your son your dose of sun daily sun so when you say uh, same thing, you know, different days, are you talking about you still getting billions? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I wish. Fifty bill, fifty bill, boy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, how about you, uh, son David? How's it up in uh, Cleveland? Raining like crazy, man. I'm telling you, I mean, it's been pouring down rain. People are hydroplaning. You know, it, it's been terrible for the last couple of weeks. We just had a storm come through, man. It was knocking. They, they, they were saying, uh, I think a couple of days ago, we were expecting like 80 mile an hour winds. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was something else, man. But on the other, on another note, uh, around uh, September 25th, I'll be coming through that airport down in Atlanta. Okay. I want you to bring me one of them wraps. <laughs> All right. Well, keep in touch with me. I, we 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 hook up. You said come through. What do you mean? You is it a layover or? Yeah, you got about an hour, hour and a half layover. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. I, I man, I bring you one. I, I bring you one for real. <laughs> okay. Man. <laughs> yeah. All right. September 25th, but you got, you definitely got to remind me closer, closer to the time. All right, will do. All right, that's good. So I'm just trying to warm it up. So peace to the chat, peace to Omar Reed again, peace to uh, Mongo Slade, peace to Donnie, brother Donnie. Who else? Uh, That's all, peace to Zane. So let me post the link. So, you know, I'm gonna post the link now. Uh, Actually, let me switch over. I'm going to post a link, but remember, we're going to do a little freestyling and everything. So, you know, you're welcome to come in, but we want to get through it a bit with some interaction. So let me get this link posted here. Can I post it? Yeah, here we go. All right. So, yeah, you're welcome. Those who are listening and watching, uh, you're welcome to join the panel. All right. You know how we do. We open the panel up. All right, so remember today's discussion, the title of the video is Time Traveling Priests of Kemet. And just to kind of like, again, just to um, preference the, preface the, the, the video, um, we wanted to kind of incorporate this one into Freestyle Friday because recently um, a particular stila came up in conversations related to um, the elder Mfandishi, who gave a tour at the Met Metropolitan Museum, where he, he, he told people that the um, Egyptian priest, if they wore this attire that, and, and meditate, and I guess it's with certain words that they could time travel, and, you know, left, if left alone and unaddressed, we, we run the risk of definitely people being led astray and so you know i you know um with respect to address this issue with respect to the elder um and everything we're gonna we're gonna deal with it on a freestyle friday and address the issue but but just to just to put it out front um the priests were not time traveling so let me just put that out there in front Priests were not time traveling. You don't have to know anything about Egypt to, to have that understanding because just think, just think of basic logic. If the priests were able to time travel, now I'm not saying uh, even time traveling as in poof, disappearing and then reappearing in the future or the past. I'm, I'm even talking about what would be close to, to be called remote viewing where people could meditate, close their eyes and then travel through time mentally Either or, it really wouldn't make sense because if that were the case and it was a priestly thing, then the ancient Egyptians would be able to see all of their enemies 
where they would approach the land, how many soldiers they would have, what weapons they would have and everything. Egypt would never lose a battle. The Hyksos couldn't take over. The uh, Romans, Greeks wouldn't be able to take over. Um, all, all, you know, it, it's just a whole lot of things that that would would just would not make sense. All right. So we're going to get into that. Just just uh, warm, warm it up a bit. And um, yeah, you all are welcome. So um, another thing, you know, we, we were asked what whatever happened to like our intros on the on the videos we used to come on because we just pop up we just pop it and i'm I'm just talking it's, it's dead silence and i'm just like etm hotep and you know uh uh brother chris will come in and add that that uh midnight um after hours radio voice uh welcome to kmt radio you know but people have been asking about um our intros and everything so we're gonna get back in into the intros that we had and everything so I think um, this one, we used to use this one, so I'm going to play it for uh, um, as a throwback. So we'll be right back in 30 seconds. Hopefully this will work. Y'all tell me if y'all you all remember this. And I don't think everybody, anybody on the panel is going to hear this, but we're going to find all that out. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so uh, I don't think you all heard that. <laughs> Did you? I doubt that. Then I didn't hear it. Right. So, see, there you go. We tried it and we failed. Well, I tried it and I failed. So you can see it, but you can't hear it. Nope, you can't hear it on either side. Okay. Well, hey, uh, we'll get it together. And we'll have our, our um, intros back, back in effect, all right? Because people, you know, um, miss it, and so do I. So we, we'll get it together. Um, yeah, so let's see. Anybody has anything else? So Chris is here. So Chris, you got any um, any radio announcements? Any uh, Anything going on? Oh, we were talking about where we were, you know, what's going on. So you were in Chicago, I think? No, no. You used to be. But yeah, what's going on? With I'm in Alabama. Oh, you definitely broke up. I'm in Alabama now. Okay, so how's how's it over there? You you the next state over? How how's it in Alabama? Yeehaw! <laughs> okay. Coming from Chicago, then to Miami, then to Alabama. Yeah, that's a that's a real change of scenery. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. are you um where you live at is it considered um that you know how you have three layers you got the city the suburbs and then the boonies the country oh, okay good yeah so i live i live in tuscaloosa so is this is this is compared to surrounding areas this the city oh wow okay okay yeah yeah but it's still i mean compared to chicago and miami this is Yeehawville. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's um all right, I'm gonna try this one more time real quick. Let's just let's just see if this is gonna work. Let's try it. I'm gonna try it one more time. Y'all give me one more shot, you know. Let's see. I doubt if y'all heard that. I heard in, it a little bit. Yeah, it came in briefly on and off. Okay, well, all right. So I gave it a second chance. So I'm not going. I, all right, that's that failed. That's a failure. No, no, no. I, I no. heard it. Yeah, I heard a little bit, but this is a good time to test it out so you can see if it works. Yo, that's that's old school. I don't remember that one. Yeah, that's a that's one of the ones we used a while back. 
2018. That's that wasn't the first, but that was one we used. But um, yeah, we are definitely not hearing it though. So I'm used to the one that you did with with like the bat signal with the uh, yeah, I know the light that's shining in the sky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I we don't hear it. So hey, um, that's just that can't hear anything so that's not cool but all right so i don't want i don't want to dwell on it um i will test it out another time or even at the end of the show have fun all right so let's get into this let's get into topics so shout out to everybody in the chat we're going to get into the to the topic tonight and um so here we are so this is going to be the stealer that we're going to deal with all right so again you know we brought this up because uh, it was brought up about priests being able to time travel. And so this is the stealer that was used or was pointed to by Elder Mfundishi. And so with all due respect, we just want to go in on it as far as the um, transliteration, translation, freestyle. And then we could talk about what about it that says any, you know, anything about uh, time traveling. All right. So. This is it. So you all, uh, um, you know, let's begin. We're going we're gonna to jump in. So anybody on the panel, I want I want to know what are the four steps to transliterate and translate uh, Egyptian writing? What are those four steps? You have to recognize um, which direction the uh, which direction, which, which is the correct read direction, whether they're in columns or in rows. Okay, that's um, step one. Uh, you also have to um, identify um, the single characters, all the ones that you can identify. Okay, that's... Um... Step two is is to um, identify all of the glyphs. Mm -hmm. Step three or step three. Step three is your. I think I get this right. Your uh, trans. Oh, you have to look up the ones that you don't know. Mm -hmm. We're well, still in step two. Well, and then <clears throat> find um, find find words. Okay. Yep. That's step three in the dictionaries. And then uh, do your transliteration. Okay. Right. The translation and step four. All right. So those are the, those are the uh, four steps. So um, we have to identify the direction in which the glyphs are to be read. Step two, identify every glyph. And obviously you're going to look up the ones you don't know and you don't need to look up the ones you already know. Step three is to pattern recognition, group those glyphs together to form the words that they are a part of. It's a parsing um, step, pattern recognition step. And you take those words, the ones you know, you don't have to look up. The ones you don't know, you have to look up in, in the various different lexicons, dictionaries, et cetera. And step four, you have to apply grammar and to come away with a sensible translation. Step four is a semantic endeavor. So yeah, that is it. So that's what we're going to do. But now the difference with, with freestyling is that we don't use any books. So it's straight from the dome, straight from the head, based on what you know, what you can remember, and all of that good stuff. All right. So we're going to start off with this uh, stila. All right. Now, I know it's small. I just want you to see the full artifact. All right. So I'm going to zoom in. And uh, let me get my cursor over here and we're going to zoom in here so hopefully everyone will see i know i know there's a delay in the chat so if you want to participate you know hit the link okay if you want to if you want to participate in this exercise uh hit the link because the chat has a delay in in trying to interact and ask questions it is gets awkward all right so and even now there's a there's a huge delay uh, from my end, from the YouTube side. All right, so let's uh, let's begin. So we're going to start 
Okay, I have this arrow. So let's start with step one. Now, as our son David said, step one, you're gonna you're gonna um, identify the direction in which the glyphs are to be read, but you're gonna do two things really. You're gonna identify the direction and orientation of the glyphs in question. So what can we say about this? Uh, let me actually show the full one again. Okay, what can we say about this artifact in terms of step one? Who, who wants to, to take care of that? Well, you can identify that the, the top two are in uh, rows and the rest of it is in columns. Okay, excellent. Absolutely correct. So we have two rows, maybe some more because it's broken off, and then the rest are in columns. Exactly. Okay. So now the two rows, now you, you, you gave the orientations, but now let's deal with direction. Which direction should we read the glyphs in, the, in these two rows? From right to left. Okay, yep. So we're going to read from right to left. So just for the listening audience, why is that? Into the face of the characters. Okay, exactly. Take care. Nice. Um, all right, so as far as the columns... What direction should we read the columns? You read down from uh, left to right. Yep, that is correct. So we're going to read this way, but within each column. You're going to go down from top down, but you're going to read from left to right within each column. All right. And that's for the same reason. Okay, excellent. So we have glyphs with two two different directions and two different orientation. All right. So, all right. So that's, uh, that's the first observation. Now um, let's identify some glyphs. So this is where I'm going to zoom in again and let's identify some, some glyphs. So where is step two now? Step two, we have to identify every single glyph. And every time I say that people, you know, I know people cringe because it's like, wait a minute, that's a lot of glyphs that, that it could be you know, depending on the artifact, obviously, but even this one, that each individual glyph, you're like, wait a minute, I have to identify every one? And the answer is yes. But it's not as um, daunting or tedious as it seems because at this point in your, you know, abilities, you would have, you, you would have memorized a lot of glyphs already, especially the monoliterals. All of the monoliterals should be committed to memory at a very early stage in your learning process. Okay. Um, so let us begin here. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just, just to make it easier, I'm just going to point to some glyphs and anybody on the panel. And again, if you're on the chat, you want to join in, click the link. But anyone on the panel, just go ahead and identify the glyph. So I'm going to kick it off. And I'm going to start off with this one right here. Maybe I should change this color to red, but uh, anyone can chime on in. Me? Yep. Okay. So let me let me clarify. When I when in identifying the glyph, give the transliteration. So how how would how would it be transliterated? You you could say it, but also give the transliteration. Well. If M I, <clears throat> excuse me, M M I, yep. and it's translated, I believe, as like. Okay, yeah, we don't have to get a translation, but you, you could. That's that's okay. cool. <laughs> See, uh, in case anyone don't know, uh, uh, son, son David likes to show off, so we just <laughs> he about he about to break down. He's like, it's 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 a milk jug uh, stand. Um, it means me. It's used in phrases commonly as Uncle Ra, and he about to break it all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, we just need the transliteration and, and to identify it. Now, mm -hmm. normally in identifying this, you, you would want to make note of what's called the Gardner codes as well. But for freestyle, we don't bother with the Gardner codes. Um, and we don't expect anyone to memorize all of the Gardner codes for every glyph. If, if you do, you are a special person. All right. You don't belong on this, uh, on, on this planet. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to another glyph. Uh, let us go to 
this glyph right here is a composite glyph consisting of these two parts. Wob? Yes. That sound like Donnie. That's me. All right. Hotep. Uh, yeah, that's excellent. Wob. Now, how would you transliterate it? How Can you spell it out for us in transliteration? Uh, uh, W-B-T. Uh, okay. Uh, Close, but try again. Uh, 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 I, I have to defer. D uh, w, um, if it's not a W, I'm sorry, go ahead. Now, say you, you said it correctly, just, um, and, and it sounds the way it's transliterated. Uh, I, I'm still working, that's not my specialty yet. Uh, so I, I'm just, okay. uh, well, you 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 got it correct. Um, it's W A B, Waba. Yep. All right. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to another one. Uh, let's see. Let me switch directions on you over here, and we're gonna go to this one right here. Who can tell us about that glyph? When. when? All right. Yep. <laughs> when. Win, win, <laughs> win, exactly. Uh, but somebody give the transliteration. W N. Okay, yep. excellent. As a matter of fact, I think I need to lock it on my screen because I know whoever's speaking is going to switch over. It's just pardon me. Let me just. All right, there we are. Okay, um, let's see another one. Okay, we're going to go, now we're going to switch it back over here and that glyph right there. Who can tell us about that one? Um, that is hat. Um, it is H, uppercase H, A, T. I think it's uppercase H, uppercase A, T. Okay. Great. Yes. Hot. Not hot, but hat. <laughs> That's how people say hot. It's hat. That's what uh, Mika said in Florida. It's, it's hat. <laughs> Probably with the, with the right pronunciation, it would be something like <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so let's move to another one. Let's move to another glyph. Uh, let's see if we can identify. Hmm, this one here. Oh, what's there? Yeah. All right. Donnie's on the road. What? I, look, see that. I, see that's what I'm talking about. Donnie comes up here and says, "That's not my specialty yet." That's my, my specialty, yet, but he's calling them all off. And that's not my specialty. <laughs> Crazy like that, but that's, that's dope. I don't even get the whole question. I'm like, identify this. What's here? <laughs> you know, you know, the, the, the uh, television game shows where you got to hit the buzzer before, what was it, Family Feud? You got to hit the buzzer before, um, that's Donnie right now. All right, so let's see. Um, all right, we're gonna move along, and well, Joe, yes, that's 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 not what's we'll here. Oh, it's not. Mm -mm. Okay, uh, help him out. Who sir? That's was. Wast. Okay. Well the, well, the bread loaf goes with the hat. So that's that's was hat. To you. Okay, now, um, all right, so, okay, so let, so we have two things on the table. We have was, and then we have wasir. So just everybody keep that in mind. We're going we're gonna to settle that. A little... Stop, stop, question. Uh, uh, question that. Yes. Singly, it is, but with the other glyph behind it, it's not. Okay. 
Right. That's a phonetic compliment behind it. Oh, but you all got to remember that it's just asking for the glyph on its own. So you don't have to look at not the word, but that is, you know, but just the glyph on its own. What would it be? Yeah, the glyph on its own would be Usir. Okay. All right. So I think, Donnie, you have prevailed. It's, uh, it's W-S-R. Usir. It's a triliteral. And that, but um, Chris made a point. The the bread loaf is goes with the the hot. Already we know was said hot. Um, given away, it's a person. So let's. So they both right. So they both is right, right. Well, he said was um for the glyph, but it's it is it is the R. It is an actual or it's triliteral. Not not Wasir as in the deity Osiris. That's that's a that obviously that would be a different glyph, but it's um Wasir. It sounds like the way we say it, Wasir, Wasir, but it's not the same as Osiris Wasir. Okay, let me give you another one. Um Sini Wasaret. It's the same glyph. It means man. Belonging to the powerful one, see ni wasaret, but they say sin wasaret. Most people say sin wasaret the third or whatever. Um, that's the same thing. Wasir, sin wasaret. All right. Um, okay, so let's let's. Uh, I'm trying to find another one. Okay, this one here. It. Yes. I be. Okay. Correct. Yep. All right, good. We're on a roll here. Um, okay, we're going to sneak this one in. Let me move this up a bit. We're going to go with uh, this right here. Sin? Nin. Nin. Oh, it looks like that. Because it's facing the other way. Cheru. Uh... Tiu, yes. All right, Iker, that's, that's correct. Cheru, yep. Now, how would you transliterate it? Uh, X R W. Yep. All right, there we are. Okay, so one more, one more, because I don't, you know, one more. Uh, this one here, Mika. Uh, okay. See, Mika, Mika like to sit in the back. Mika be the person, you know. Picture day, she she stand in the back back row. Now, now Mika's mic's not gonna work. The, I can't remember that one. Okay. All right, no problem, no problem. Um, how about this one? It looked like my <laughs> No, the glyph by itself. That that, that glyph. What, what is it? You see a couple of them on the screen. You see, you see that one. You see it right here. You see it right here. One, two, three of them. Single letter. Mm, monoliteral. Monoliteral. That's Donnie's a, a, a specialty. See, you hear him? <laughs> the monoliteral system. Come on, Mika. You used to be hard on me. Come on. <laughs> um is it m yep there you go see see i want i want to hear the confidence though like see this is what this is what uh, i am okay, there, there you go but no seriously though all, all jokes aside you know like i said i can always say this is a safe zone it is it is okay to be wrong you know and so i always say be you know be wrong be strong you know it's like if, if you if because you know if you'd like is it a m it's almost like you waiting for somebody to hit you like is it a m like you can get shocked if you're wrong like you know and when i instead of saying it's an m and then just <laughs> and then just be wrong <laughs> like 
at least have a committed wrong answer. Uh, no, I mean, you know, I'm just saying we got to confidence. Yeah. Some of Anachi used to yell at us if we came in. Are you asking me a question? Right, right. You came in weak. <laughs> that's, that's, what that's what I'm saying. It, you know. Like I, you know, I, I honestly, I actually, you know, with my daughters and anybody around me, I'm like, I'm like, don't do that. That's, you know, don't, don't do that. Don't let's, I want, let's, let's just be confident. It, I, you know, just be wrong. If we wrong, wrong. Everybody makes mistakes. Shoot. Everybody makes mistakes. All right. So. Well, I could be wrong and be right too. <laughs> I know when to turn it on. Yeah. I mean, true. But. Let's just have, you know, let's speak with confidence. Even if you're wrong, you, you, you got that mojo mind power. You could have been like, this is an H. And we would have just had to believe you because the way you said it, this is an H. <laughs> no, but all right. So I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Uh, how does, how's the chat doing? I, I don't even know who's, anybody coming? Oh, we have a few people. We got Brother Zane. Donnie, Mr. Jerry. All right. And Brother June. All right, we got June in the house. Hotel. Hotel, hotel. So remember, remember the link is here. Everyone's welcome to, on the panel. So if you just tuned in to the channel, click the link if you want to participate. We are going through Freestyle Friday, but we are going specifically through the Stila. Um, and again, um, we chose this this one because of the comments that was made about this guy this figure right here the outfit that he's wearing it was said that the outfit that he's wearing because it has pleats in it and those folds that allowed this priest through meditation and uttering certain words or what have you could time uh travel through time all right and so we are dealing with this in freestyle, but we also addressing that particular claim as well. All right, so we so we went through step two. Now, obviously, we would have to identify every glyph, but we for time's sake, we just identified a few. Let's do one more. This one here, last one. Frontal face. Yeah. Yeah, frontal face. How how would we transliterate it? Her. Yep, that's correct. But how how will we transliterate it? Somebody um, spell it out for us. HR. That is Cap almost Capital correct. H. Capital H. Yeah, it, Capital H. Okay, there it is. See, the answers came in. See, Mika, you found you sound confident on that one. She came in third. <laughs> Capital HR. She said, "Yeah, take that." <laughs> would y'all be the troublemaker? She said, Donnie, you had a nerve to pick on me, so take that. Capital <laughs> HR. Okay, but that's correct. Capital HR, hair. Um, now, let me just say something as a little side note. Today's pronunciation, when we pronounce Egyptian words, just understand that we are not claiming, and no one claims. I, I, have, I have never, well, I'm not going to say I never, but none of the scholars uh, claim that our pronunciations today are historically accurate. Um, they're all estimated pronunciations. Um, the writing system does not document the vowels. But what confuses people is when we say that, they they take that to mean that we, because we don't know how it, how it was pronounced historically or anciently, that we don't know what the words mean. And that's false. You don't need to know how to pronounce a word to know what it means. You don't have to hear it to know what it means. In fact, I can show you an English paragraph and tell everyone to read it to themselves. Don't, don't utter any sounds and you can read a paragraph and, and know what it means. Comprehend it fully. Okay. But, uh, with that being said, that's why I kind of, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong or if you think I'm wrong, but that's why I, I don't really I'm not really tripping off the manual decodage or anything I, I, right now at this. I mean, as I go along, I, I try to apply it, but I'm not, it's mm -hmm. not a big thing to me. Right. Well, 
No, no. I mean, not not at this stage, but you definitely as long as you don't have the mindset that you don't need it. But I, I understand right now. Yes. But but you're going to need to. Use it. You know, in terms of documenting and, and things like that, because unless unless you are going to unless every time you deal with an Egyptian text, you're going to redraw all the glyphs yourself. You're going to have to know Maya the Codage, you know. So, um, so yeah, all right. So, all right, that's that's one, and I said that was the last one, but I think we'll do. Yeah, we'll leave it there. So we're gonna move on to step three. Step three is to group these glyphs into patterns that form words. Now, the only reason why we have to say that that way and do it is because. The Sesh Metronature writing system, it doesn't have punctuations. It doesn't have spaces between words, no commas, no periods, semicolons, colons, none of that. So the words are here, but they look like just run on words. And so there's a certain um, pattern that we see in the words. And there are glyphs that help us out with this, and they're called determinatives. Determinatives are glyphs that function as final, a final um, parsing glyph as well as a semantime. It helps determine the meaning of the word, and that's where it gets its nickname, determinative. Um, but it, it, it is a glyph like other glyphs, but it just functions. Um, it just functions. In, in a way that it um, is useful in terms of, of determining the meaning. It's not pronounced and it's not transliterated, all right? So all those things help us in, in this step, step three. So anyway, so what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow you all this time now. You tell me a word that you recognize. Let me pull this down a little bit. You tell me a word that you recognize and I'll try to find it um, and put the arrow next to it. And so what I want to know is what the word, you don't have to give the meaning, not necessarily, or you can, because we can blend step four and three together, three and four together, but tell me which glyphs are involved. So, um, so there you go. So let's go. Who's up first? In the top uh row okay uh that single reed leaf next to the man with his hand raised all right uh two okay well, okay what's the word yeah okay and what does it mean um something like uh praise or yeah, praise or I guess hail to praise. Okay, all right. Uh, not hail to, but praise. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Well, let me ask you this: Does anybody see a word in here that says time travel? Anywhere? Yeah. I actually do. Uh oh. Uh oh. Where? <laughs> I actually do. Where? Where do you see that? Okay, hold on. <laughs> no, I just play. I just with y'all. <laughs> All right. I'm about to. I'm about to say he's, he's gonna say this. This is a, a spaceship. This is a rocket right here. This is the guy. He's about to get in it with his helmet on. Uh, nah. All right, but um. I've got a word. Uh, me, okay. second row, uh, right there, M-I, meaning okay. like or likewise. Okay, all right, good. Okay. Anybody recognize anything else? And anything else in the first two rows? Because I'm, I'm going to push this picture up. So anything else in the first two rows? What about this here? Um, there's, yeah, that's the one I was about to say. Uh, Hiradu. 
or kid, like child or children. Okay. Good. Kid. All right. Um, okay, so I'm gonna push this up. So we deal with some things here. All right, so someone tell me uh any words that you recognize. Um, I see the name of his his lady. Okay. Uh okay, one see. Oh um it's the third column on the right. Third column from the right over here. And at the bottom. At the bottom here? Yeah, I think that's her name. E.T. Right, right below that, right below Hess. Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. E.T. I think that's her name. E.T. Yeah, oh. this singer. Yeah, mistress. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Now, let me just say this as a as a FYI to, to everyone. When, when you're doing this process, whether you're freestyling, you know, testing your, your skills and memory, or you're, you're actually sitting with the resources in front of you, that be a dictionary, glyph list, and, and all the books in front of you, this process is going to, you're going to, you're going to make several passes through this process, especially the steps we're on. Step three and four, you're going to, you're going to bounce back and forth through that. And so you're going to, you may speculate at first. And take a guess like okay this word i'm assuming this word is this this word is that and when you look it up it may not make sense and then as you do other words around the word in question you'll get you'll gain context and then you come back to the word that you may have a question mark on and you'll be able to figure it out so so it, it is a detective type um, process investigative gative process all right so i just want to let everyone know that if you don't get it right the first time, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's perfectly normal. All right. Um, okay. So any, any other words? I think uh, that's a, a, maybe another name. Maybe that's the name. What's that? It's, it's um, to the left. It's under a, a hood. There's a, a hood symbol. No, left more. It's like maybe four rows over from the left. Oh, four rows over the left, over here? Yeah. There's over a here, symbol here? and we have the Wasir. Yeah, Wasir with the S. Wasir, okay. hot. And then it looks like it says Mont Carew or Mont Carew. All right, excellent. That might be a name right there. Well, uh, let's let's turn the volume up on the confidence now. Is it is it might be a name or is yeah, it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's a name. We usually uh, see names before the combination of glyphs. Uh, Ma Karu. All right, Ma you... Karu. All right, there you go. Okay, excellent. Then can uh, I add uh, uh, Eman? Eman or uh, Amen? Oh, okay. Where do you see that? Uh, all the way to the right, last row. Up here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I'm in. Yes, definitely. Okay. Nice. Um, but what June was saying, though, uh, this is an indicator. And this is something that, that you can do first off. <clears throat> if you want to know a name of a person, usually the person that's in the figure, one of these two figures, is going to have Makheru after their name. So if you look for Makeru, which is here, Makeru, what comes right before it is usually the name. Okay, so this is Wesser Hat Makeru. So this is this, this person, this figure here. This is the person that is supposed to be able to time travel. Wesser Hat. I got a question. Yes. Are you saying, uh, are you saying Ma'a? Or ma, ma, uh, is there a difference like Makaru or uh, Ma'a Heru? Is, is there a difference? Yes. Uh, okay. so, yeah. So Ma'a Heru. So it's true. Like the, the, the masculine form of Ma'at. But instead of saying the T, it's Ma'a without the T. Ma'a. So Ma'a Heru. So Ma'a or Ma'at. It means true. It means um, real. 
and some people say a lot of other things like law, balance, reciprocity, order, you know, and everything. <clears throat> but it, you know, it means true, or real. Also loyal. Seshu ma'a ni metonetra, the loyal scribes of metonetra aspiring to be the true, true scribes, actual scribes. Okay. Um, any other words? Any, anybody else? I've got one. Um, let's see. One, two, oh, so third. third somebody, third. Before you say your, your um, give your word, uh, son David, somebody's real low. I thought that. Yeah, I thought yeah that was me. My, my mic was, um, <laughs> it was up. I didn't realize it. This is raw. Okay. Um, uh, right above um, the lady's um, head to the left, um, I see something that looks like it says uh, per Kebe. Is, 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 is that one word? The, the, uh, oh, actually, I might be reading. I see what I'm doing wrong. I'm reading it the wrong direction. Uh, right, that, that second word, well, the third word, really, I think. Um, well, there's eight. Uh, yeah, right there. And um, what would you translate? How would, how would you translate that? How, I, I, at first, I thought, I think I had some dis dis kind of dyslexia at first because uh, I read it as Quebec or like cool water, but then I noticed that, that S on the end of it. Then I realized that uh, actually I read it backwards in the first place. So, um, or at least I think maybe I did. How would you read that? It's, it's um, in this whole column, it's Nebet Per Hesit. Hesit Nit Heru. Oh, okay. Shema ni amen, hmm. neferet iri or nefertari. So this is um. Oh, this is a whole word right here. This whole little hasit right there. That's why I'm okay. I yep. got it. Okay, got so it. So has, hasit would be um, one who is favored. You know, it means yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I was reading the whole thing kind you of are, off, you know, uh, because I wasn't, I was separating, first of all, I was reading the top part back, but then I, then uh, I was separating uh, the bottom half from it. I hadn't even looked at it yet, didn't oh, realize okay. it's all one word. Okay, you know? okay. all right. So I think, I, I think I kind of biased, you know, my, my, my bias kicked in for uh, for that, that, that libation thing right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, no, that's yeah. good, though. I, I have a question, if, if it's yes. okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, in that same column, uh, right under the right under the nib, is that the? Um, are we looking at a, a a T, or is that the sign for I think uh, a month? Are, are we are we dating something here? Okay, I can see why you say that, and that's and that's a good observation because it does look like that, but that's a T. Okay, so it's no bet. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yep. It's Nebet. Nebet Pear, which is mistress of the house. It looks like a UFO for time travel, so I think we're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> getting close. We're getting close. Look like a dome, a dome ship, doesn't it? Okay. All right. Let me catch one that out. All right. Uh, I got one. Uh, third column on the left, uh, right in the middle. Uh, Neferet. Okay. Yes, right here, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's right. Which is what? A good thing or something good? Yes. So we might as well do this whole column. <laughs> so we so now now here's the here's the thing as well, right? When you when you start to get familiar with words, and I'm gonna tell you, let me let me find uh just bear with me one second. Let me see if I can find anything in English that I have um on here okay let's just okay i'm going to use this as an example so just ignore the image but look at this english paragraph these two paragraphs over here on the right um because we know english and we and we use it day to day we um and, and English, the punctuation or the um, orthography of English, we have spaces, we have commas, we have everything. So the, the words are already parsed for us. And but if there's a word misspelled, we would know that it's misspelled because we know what it should be. Because of our familiarity with it. 
And so let's say let's say this was written on on paper. If if I was to rip off a corner of this paper right about here, you you would still be able to make a very good guess at what was missing because of context and because of your familiar familiarity with the words, just you know, basic English words. So I say that to say that even in um, Ronnie Kimmett or Sesh Metal Nature, this I mean, back how this is chipped off. Okay, so so this artifact is chipped off. It's chipped off here. So even though there's there's a break right here, we know what glyph this is right here. Can anyone um, identify that glyph right there? The screen went small. It's small. Okay, let me let me let me show it on here. So it's this glyph right here. Who can tell me what that glyph is? Uh, right the here? R, the R, mouth. The R, the mouth. Yep. Uh, exactly. Even though more than half of it is missing, we we know what it is. So so I just wanted to point that out. All right. You know, um, this one is an owl. We know because it's the same bottom portion of this owl, but the top part got cut off. You got now, the lotus plant down there, uh, right next to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 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 um the papyrus thicket. Oh, papyrus thicket. Yeah, yeah but I said that's a... that's in a vase, right? Not necessarily. It's like they call it a, a thicket of papyrus. Oh, okay. I thought yeah, it was, was in like a was square, too. square something. Yeah, there are two of them that always seem similar, except the bottom part. I think one with meh and the other one with ha. Mm -hmm. so get confused now. So, but that was my point though. We we can we can make out some of the glyphs that, that may be partially missing and even some words as well, once we you know recognize the words. All right. So what made me say that is because of this glyph here. Now everyone on the panel, shame on all right, there you go. See, I told you. <laughs> Donnie be here. Sorry, y'all. I don't know. This is family feud, boy. This is Jeopardy. Don, Donnie got the, the thing in his hand and he just hit the button. Ding, 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 ding. You know, I ain't even get the whole question out. Sesh. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 200 for, for uh, whatever, Alex. Okay. Um, yeah, this is Sesh. All right. So this is Sesh. So we, we, we let's do this whole column. So we have Sesh. And then who, who knows what this word is? That's a spaceship. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So that's all right. That's the time travel. That's the time travel. I'm just guessing, but it looked like the ear, like a sad drum. Okay, that's good. I'm that's just, a good I'm just guessing. Yeah, that's a good guess. It's it's not correct, but that is definitely a good guess. Because it does look like that. And and the reason why I say it's it's a good guess, and even though it's wrong, is because it shows that you you are basing that on the shape and look of it and then obviously you wouldn't stop there you would actually go confirm it by looking in the glyph list and then you'll then you'll say oh wow i'm wrong and then you'll find you know the correct one um by, by the way brother i'm sorry can't I, just know, I meant to say this earlier can you go uh let me see go go up back to the uh the upper columns for a moment the um oh the rows of here yeah Mm -hmm. If you look right, uh, comes from the back of the head directly up to to that car. You went to on the bottom, right, right back of his head. Right here. You right now. Okay, now come down to that last one. Right. That's that's where the time travel thing comes in. That's that's where the problems coming in. Uh -huh. you, it, okay. it looks like a spaceship. It looks like a spaceship or a tank, which comes from the whole. You know the whole mess. <laughs> oh, okay, right, right. Looks like, <laughs> it, look, it, look, look, it looks like a hovercraft from the uh, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can yeah. also be a lighter. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It looks like like a lighter. Looks like look like um yeah. Hey. yeah see what see what, what 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 it is is that you know I remember you know. Uh, you know, back when the whole question about you know uh, time travel, the, you know, and and uh, and uh, space, you know, um, uh, alien UFOs or whatever, being on hieroglyphs, 
that uh, that particular glyph was was involved. You know, mm-hmm. uh, if if you look at it, so it might have been he saw that. Time travel. <laughs> well, no, that that you know that glyph that you just point out and this yeah. one because see this looks like a spherical planet and and yeah. and like the this this ship is orbiting the planet you know yeah 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 that might have been what it was but i but i don't know but because i remember the, the, the whole mess the whole mess uh you know on ancient aliens or whatever that is mm-hmm. yeah uh, i forget which temple that was my temple no, i did I, I did i i did boy i did years ago i did a whole expose of that it, it was the temple of seti the first and ramsey the yeah. second in abydos yeah. Where the names are superimposed on each other, and yeah, and, exactly, and it caused that whole mess. Yeah. yeah, and I think these two, these both of those, the one right above it, and that one, I think those two were involved. It was, um, it was, it was actually yeah. looked like a Apache helicopter, but it was, it was two different words there. You're right. You're correct. Yep. Got to Got to admit that baby did look like an Apache. No, but <laughs> but but no, but I'm jo- no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm saying it did look like one, but. Oh. You know, uh, uh, clearly it was not one. Right, right, exactly. But no, we can't we can't sleep on this cliff either because with with a good imagine a healthy imagination, this looked like a spaceship with two le- landing legs, two antennas, oh, yeah. and then a, and then a ray beam that's shooting out. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, we could we I mean, hey, well, you, you know, it's it, like a, it on. <laughs> right, you know, yeah. but see, that's only for people who don't know the glyphs this is a um a underbelly of an animal and this is the yeah, teeth the of of the um of the animal so this is the word hered, which is for chill, mm-hmm. children child that's why it's determined here so so there's no there's no um time traveling so yeah but all right so let's get back to this column here though because this is going to be um interesting here no that's um so i'm gonna push this back up here so we're gonna deal with this column here and so we so we have sesh and then we were still dealing with this uh who who did anybody give it yet is that the uh the, the what they call it a, a postular gland yeah. Pos- okay gland. yep but what does it what does it translate to or i never i never figured it would be it, out. it would it, it would, would something it would, it would be um the equivalent of computer today no, I'm serious. Oh, computer. Mm-hmm. It's not Haseb, is it? Yes. Yeah. There you go. Haseb. Haseb, which means to count. So so when I say a computer, I'm talking about a computer is made to count. So the the now they didn't have computers, but I'm saying if if we were to choose a word close to computer, it would be Haseb, which means to count and accounting. So sesh hasib, which means a person who documents accounts. So this is an accountant. Sesh hasib is the word for accountant. And we have them today. You, you, you get a, uh, an accountant or what's the uh, other person called that does that kind of work? CPA, certified personal assistant or personal mm-hmm. accountant. Yep. There you go. CPA or just a public accountant accountant exactly so this is a cpa right here what else cpa of what hotel hotel oh oh you're saying hotel okay uh who is that some repeat that again hotel of all things okay but say but um give us that egyptology speak <laughs> Donnie is hitting that button. Boy. He's hitting that button quick. Too cool. Am I wrong? Uh, yes. Okay. But that's good though. See, that's 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 what I'm talking about. You you know you're strong and wrong. That's good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cases you learn uh, quicker when you're wrong. So okay, but I need I need one good answer because uh, I think Chris was saying it. See, I was saying chet nebet neferet of all, all good things or beautiful things. Okay, so we have ket here where I'm pointing at. Mm-hmm. And then we have nebet. And then we have neferet. Right. Ket nebet neferet. Okay. In, in the so, house of somebody. 
So let's um, let's my, my bad. Let's go. No, no, no. Don't. Uh, that's good because this looks like Hotep. And see, this is what I mean. This is why I said, you know, this is a trial and error process. This is a, an investigative process. You're gonna make assumptions, and then you you try to confirm, and then in that process, you'll find out, okay, I'm right or I'm wrong. I gotta adjust, or I I don't have to. And so this looks like the Hotep glyph. But you'll find out that this is a scroll that has been tied and not the Hotep glyph because they look a little bit alike. But, you you know, you'll find it out because you'll you'll assume it's Hotep first. But then like, well, wait a minute. What is this? These other two glyphs. And you'll find out it's Ket. And Ket means thing. So it's saying all things good. Ket in the for that. All things good or all good things. So he's so. Whoever this is, it's, a, it's an accountant of all good things. But what comes next? Mika, what's this again? I bet you. M. Yep. M. And what is it? What does it mean? Do you remember what it means? No, I don't remember. Okay. Anybody, anyone else want to help her out? Bye, four. Uh, cool. In. The most common one in in yep i n in okay so we have the accountant of all good things in so it's gonna be in some place so what's this place what's this right here what comes next uh a temple it's like um put nebra is that a is that a neb there put nebra Okay. Uh, it's hard to make it out. That looks like a seated deity with a sun disc on its head. And that looks like Neb. Yeah, that's Neb. So that Lord, Lord Ra? Mm -hmm. Close, close. Uh, for time, I'll just say, I'll just say it. It is a uh, Neb Maat Ra. Also, oh, yeah. that object on the deity's head is a feather. Yes. Okay. Neb Maat Ra. Yeah, makes sense. In the house of yeah, Neb Maat Ra. Okay. Yep. Put Neb Maat Ra. Mm -hmm. So we have an accountant. So we have Sesh Hasib Ket Nebet Neferet M Neb Maat Put Neb Maat Ra. So he's the accountant of all good things in the temple or house of Neb Mad Ra. By chance, this is I'm gonna go on a limb. Does anybody know who Neb Mad Ra is? Hatshepsut. <laughs> Close. Her 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 name is Maat Kara. Ah yeah yeah yeah. Um, Neb Mad Ra. Neb. Now I usually get the I usually get them confused, so I don't. If anyone else is knows, it one, is, it, is it is it one of the Amen Hoteps? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Right. Uh, yeah, but I don't know which one though. <laughs> right. Amen Hotep the third. Yep. Third. Amen Hotep the third. Okay, that was a good, really good guess. Um. So Neb Mod Ra. Okay, now this is broken up, but I think that somebody on the panel should be able to make this out. Yeah, natural him tepi. Okay, yeah, there you go. But what does it mean? Um, he um, literal translation. Uh, well, what is, what is it often translated as? Uh, the, the the first prophet. Yep, there you go, the first prophet. All right, now the rest of it is broken off. It's probably some saying some other stuff, but then we get up here. Is another end, so it has to say he does some something else is going on, and then we then we repeat in or m, which is the word in preposition in, and then we have another put something who can make that one out. Is that Kepara? Yes, and there's a neb there too, right? Yeah, neb, yeah, neb Kepara, yeah, a little neb there. 
Okay. Keperu, I see. Um, three strokes. Oh, yeah, two. Keperu. Keperu, uh, Keperu uh, looks like ne uh, oh, those are, Nebu. Okay. Those are three strokes? Mm hmm. Net Keperu Ra? Yes. Now, that's a little bit more famous, so who knows who that is? <laughs> Neb Keperu Ra. We should all know who this is. Actually. Yeah, I've seen that one a lot. That's uh, King, King Tut. Who uh, is known as King Tut? Yeah. Uh, Two Tank. Yeah. Amen. Tut Ankh Amen. Yeah, Tut Ankh Amen. Yep. So we we now we could now we could pretty much date this step stealer. Um, oh, we have Neb. Uh, excuse me, Neb Maad Ra was Amen Hotep the third. And we have Neb Keperu Ra, which is a uh, Tudunk Amen. So this piece is from the uh, the early Armana period. Um, no. Um, Later. Yeah, 18th, early, yeah, early Armana period. Later uh, Armana period. Because Armana is. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it's, but it's 18th dynasty, though, in that. Yeah. Yep, yep. So you said ladder, okay? Yeah, ladder. I'm gonna say ladder because Tunak Amen came came after uh, Akhenaten and and uh, to you and everything. Okay, so now it makes sense why why they look like that because there there's a there's a particular style that is pretty much unique to the Amarna period and and that that period in Kemet. Okay, in terms of the facial features, the eyes. And a lot of people who are into that UFO um, type of doctrines and things like that, they they favor this period. Like they, it's almost like nothing else in Egypt existed except for this period because of the stylistic, the artistic style um, of figures. You know, they everybody look like you know, look like greys, aliens and greys. The elongated heads. Yes, the elongated heads. Yep. And all of that good stuff. Okay, so we did that. So we hear M um M Neb Capital Ra. Okay, so now let's let's I think we already did this. June already did this. So you can you repeat this part. With Sir Hot yep. Ma Karu. Okay. Jed F Nope. <laughs> okay, so what is Jed F, what does it mean? Uh uh he says. Yep. And what I is am, Yeah, Nuke is I am. Yep. Uh Ger or yeah, the word Ger. Yeah. And you know, I, I want to say I, I'm I can't see this the um YouTube chat right now, but I hope everybody's following. I know we seem to maybe moving fast, but if you if you want to chime in, hit the link. But uh, go ahead. So what, what's ger? Anybody know what ger means? Uh, good night. Like night. Good night. Okay. Salut. That's close. That's good. See, Donnie's on it. But but now that's close. Not quite, but that's close. That's ger. But this is ger for silent. Yeah, silent. Okay. You know, the uh, with the um, uh, determinative on the end. I and and yeah. Speechless. Okay, so he's saying, um, Inek Ger, which is I am, and we can see we would start off with, with literal meanings, obviously, like the restrictive meaning. So we would say, I am, and then we could say silent. And then obviously it goes into something else that we can't see. And so right here, we're, we're in you know, speculation land. We don't know what else is, is being said. So we're forced to come back up here. And this may not be the beginning. This may be a split between whatever was last in the previous column. So we don't really know what this is saying. But one thing we do know is that this is a partial word that ends with these three strokes. Okay, so that's, that's the extent of what we can know, but it doesn't really help us. So all we know is that, that um, we're dealing with an accountant of all good things in the mansion of Amenhotep the third, uh, first prophet, 
um, and then says something, does something else in the house or the mansion of Tudunk Amen, and then the name of the person. So Waser Hat Makheru, so that's the person. That's this guy here. And then he says something. So he says, uh, Jedef, he says, I am silent. And then we can continue on. So we don't know what, what this is saying specifically, but let's continue on. So what's this word here? Uh, the truth on the chat is saying that uh, he's saying, uh, I am silent while time traveling. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 I, I wanted to point that out, though. That's good. I'm glad that, that was said because um, the claim, uh, the elder M. Fundishi said that the priest because of their outfits, can time travel in meditation and uttering words. But if this person, this, this person here, he's saying he's silent. I am silent. So he's definitely not uttering anything, you know, um, here, if we were to uh, deal with that. So, you know, it's just an example. And, and you know, I'm, I'm just going, I'm just saying we, we're addressing these claims. I, I, I just, we just can't allow people to be led astray uh, in their thinking. This has nothing to do with time travel, y'all. Absolutely nothing at all. Um, okay, but we're, this is where we are. What is this? I'm going to give you all a hint that these two glyphs side by side, they're not the exact same glyphs. <laughs> Okay, kind of. The second one is the second one is an H. Let's see this, yeah. Sa or Wa. I think it's Sa. I'm gonna say a double H. Okay, the double H is is not correct because they're not the same glyphs. They look yeah. the same a little bit, but one of them has an extra Sa. little thing on the top. Yeah, the thing on top of that. I think uh, Zane Zane was great. Zane was great. Break it down. <laughs> Oh no! I was just giving it a description. Okay. That's no. That's a uh, just the flags on the right. But yeah. On the left. Flag. That's the, that's the the S. Let's see. S capital A H S capital A capital H Sa. O Wa O Wa. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so we have Wa Ib. Ib. Anybody know what that is? Wa Ib. So we have Ib here. So together, Wa Ib. Something of the heart. Um, yeah, I don't know what. Why? Mm. Yeah, I don't know what that means. So why? I remember. Okay. Something of the heart. Place. Or place or endure or something like that. Mm. And then I can't remember why. Let's see. Did anybody are have? You, are you something? saying why? Yeah, w we, capital A capital H. Yep, why. that's correct. Is that place? Place. Mm -mm. And it's the papers rolled after it. Uh, okay, so let's let's oh, put it. Oh, let's put a pen in. So yeah. yeah. So those three symbols, they belong together. Okay, here, here's what belongs together. Um, these two are here, and then and the Pappas, Pappas roll is one word. Right. And then the heart and the single stroke is one word. Ib. Ib, so wah ib. And usually the words that are compound words like that, they form usually an idiom. Place of the heart? Um, no. Why? Why is one? Yeah, well, there is a word why one, but that this this is not it. But yeah, there is a word why, uh, W A, not not this one, W A H, W capital A capital A. Oh, W A H. Okay, okay. Why? Why? So why ib? So the, I, so for time, let's just um. So this is this is something done with the heart, and it's it it it's an idiom for patience. Patience, uh, uh, kindness. Yep. To endure the endurance of the heart 
which is endurance of the mind. If your mind can endure, that means you're patient. Especially enduring this pseudo stuff, boy, you got to be patient. You say we draw because you're so, so patient. That was a joke. Okay. <laughs> no, but it might help somebody remember the word. Yeah, yeah, that does. Could. <laughs> I thought about it. All right. So, okay. Now, next one. What is this? Everyone should know this. Looks a little bit weird, but you can still make it out. It's a tip. Yes. Chosen. Yep. Or choose. Choose or chosen, exactly. Pencil. This here. Chess. 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 No, what is that there? No. I want to say uh, chess, but is that the uh I think because there's um there's the plural, um the three strokes after it. So that's the oh, knot, yeah. chess, and then the the double. So okay. wait a minute. Um, you think it's three strokes, or do you know it's three strokes right there? Yeah, it's three strokes. Oh no, I know it's three strokes. Okay, but yeah, so the, you you you're doing the Mika thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So we have the knot, <laughs> don't bolt. See the man with a hand in the mouth, and then we got a definite three strokes after that. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we have the word chesu. Which means what? Anybody remotely knows? Speech, utterances. Okay, Chesu, speech, utterances. So what is this saying? Because now we're about to run into a nook again, uh, a neck, which is the same thing that was over here, a neck and then something. So this one said a neck ger. This one says a neck her. All right. But we're going. But before we get into the neck again, which is I am, because we know I am here. So what is this saying? This is saying um, wahib satep chesu. So we're saying patience and to choose what? What did you say chesu was again? Utterances or speech. Right. Choose utterances. Now here, here's where applying the grammar and and you know translation skills because literally we we would say. Um, to be to endure the mind, choose speech, and and that really we don't talk like in English. That doesn't make uh, sense that way. But if you if you look at the context, it says that and look, I am calm, and then something else, then patient and selective of words which means I choose my words carefully. All right. So just to, just to, you know, when you start to apply the grammar and make, and make sense of it in English, to bring it over in English. So then it goes on to a nook, but um, as far as what time, how long we've we been on? Because I don't want to long it out too much. But again, I, I do want to go back and put a pause right here, which is where we are, that this has nothing to do with time travel whatsoever. This person here, the person's name is um, Wesser Hat, and he is an accountant of all good things in the house of Amenhotep III. He is the first prophet, priest, um, and he was doing something in the mansion or house of Tudak Amen as well. And then he's a person who is calm, obviously peaceful. He is a uh, patient and selective of words. And those are all attributes of a very, you know, like wise um, person and so on and so forth. So far, he is some more because he because he says Enuk again and keeps going. But I want to just stop there. And there's no indication of anything with time travel uh, whatsoever. All right. 
Now imagine somebody just stands in front of this kind of steli and just runs their mouth and that steli actually says the opposite. The person is uh, an accountant, so they are very, they know how to calculate and be orderly. And then they are silent and they're very, you know, the patient and, and they choose their words carefully. And then somebody else comes and stands in front of that and just runs their mouth. Like that's just crazy. <laughs> it's like the total opposite. I haven't seen the clip, but was there any like, did he ever say anything about the glyphs that said anything about time traveling or you just no 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 not the no. glyphs because i don't th i think the, the whole video was actually um a tour a museum tour but there was no yeah, that's, glyphs that's at sad, all. just standing yeah. in front of glyphs and then just saying some wild things all these glyphs on here and he's just looking at the picture basically mm -hmm. oh man that's sad but isn't that one of the first first things you do? You, you have a picture there, and your documentation for whatever the scene is in the picture is the writing. Right. You never divorce the the picture with the with the glyphs. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Never do that. And this and this is a perfect example of why you never do that. You don't look at pictures and just start assuming. You don't look at figures, what they call vignettes. And, and figures and, and these pictures and scenes. You don't do that. A lot of people do that because the texts are ignored, understandably, because a lot of people don't know how to read them. They, they just see it as beautiful, beautiful additions to the scene, not knowing that the scene is the beautiful addition to the text. The text is the important part. You know, well, this is the illustration of the text. Well, Saba, they're they're both they're both got their hands up because they're surrendering, and she got hit upside the head. That's a knot upside her head. <laughs> That's <laughs> wild, right there, yo. He said, "She got it." No, nah, but but is that sorry? But is that true? Like that was something they used to wear to like it was like a perfume that used to melt down as the the day went on. That's what I heard. Y'all can laugh at me or beat me up, whatever, but that's what I heard. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not far off. That's not far off because um, there, there are other cultures that do that. They will wear um, scented things because remember, you know, um, now I know now this has nothing to do with Egypt, but I remember in, high, in junior high or some grade school, uh, you know, I'm from D.C., so my my school, we took a, a school trip to Annapolis, Maryland. And Annapolis, Maryland is the historical Maryland. It's a historical place. And I remember go, going on a field trip and they were talking about colonial Maryland, the colonies. And we were told that the um, European colonists didn't bathe. And so they used to have to talk to each other through a perfumed napkin and they used to wear it and hold it up to their face as they talked to each other because everybody stunk. Everybody used to stink. And I was like, wow. And so that reminds me because, you know, you got to stand that the sewage system and just everyday shower, we could roll, we could roll out the bed and just get in the shower nowadays, but that just wasn't always true. You know, people had to bathe and, and, and things. So, um, body oils and things like that were very necessary. More necessary. Uh, well, I can't say more, but people have many more opportunities to shower today than than obviously the further back in the past you go. Um, so that was that was a good that was a that was a necessity. You know, your body oils and and butters and things like that. Okay, so you know, just wanted to bring some more a little more realism to it. So that's a, that's a yes. The butter uh, substance they used to wear. Um, I hope that's not my internet action acting up, but the substance they used to wear on their heads, the women especially. Yep. It was trouble for... Um, but I guess before we end though, can we go to, um, I mean, I'm just, just for kicks and giggles. Can you go to the, the column right before his right hand? 
he does speak about going out upon something of his some kind of path or I guess whatever where he says up here um go down right where it starts at Enuk Enuk Shem Shemet Her Maatin or Maatin F mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I see a determined for I see some legs and I see a path there I don't know what that word is Maatin or Maatin Maatin yeah Maatin his Martin something, his Martin, Martin F. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that word means either. What I'm saying, but he goes out somewhere. So maybe, maybe, maybe that was seen and, you know, they see legs and the word shim and they say, oh, hey, he's, he's traveling somewhere out on maybe on a journey through time. Yeah. Cause when, you know, when and when wet or when new uh, does have to do with stars, you know, so. Um, but again, you know, none of, none of this is, is there. So when you see when, like here, up here, when, but this is our win, our win. And, and it, and it's a continuation of here because he says that, you know, um, a neck hair, which is, I am content upon, and then we have Paseshti in, in anybody who deals with the, the class lesson knows that Paseshti, I use Paseshti to mean chapters, but it means like a lot or a, a batch of something. And a batch of pages is what a, book, a chapter in a book is, a section. And so he's content being upon a lot, a, a certain section, and then it's broken off here. We don't know what it says, but then it continues and says, um, I win before it goes into the anek again. And awen is a word that means um, something like plunder. Plunder, greed. Right. So basically, this is the opposite of here. So he's content with the, the portions. He's content upon the portions. And then it says plunder, greed. So we can assume... It's not up here. It must be down here with the broken off part that, that this is a negation. So he's content with the proportions or portions and not greedy. Not greedy. Okay. And then he goes on. I am a neck. I am. Um, and then it goes on to Shem, Shemet. Okay. Okay. Uh, like walk go mm-hmm. so basically I went upon metin and what's that metin F what, what, what is that? his path right his path and then nin not that's negation not and then we have um, teheb Anybody want to take a crack at that? I think that's um, Tehi for go astray. Okay. So he's on a path. He went his way on, on a path not to go astray upon it. So he's on a path and he didn't, he didn't, he didn't veer off of it. And what's the next? That Ness. Uh, yeah. Ness. Nesib. Nesib. And what does that mean? Um, tongue. But Nesib is usually... Oh, sorry. Yeah, the idiom. Um, tongue, something. Mind of tongue. Did not go astray. Upon. Yeah, that's an interesting word. Tongue yeah, that, yeah, that. Mind or something. Oh, I don't know. Okay, okay well, we, we have... mind. they are connected, heart and tongue. So narrow minded. <laughs> <laughs> narrow Me? mind. How about meanness? Meanness? Yes. No. Huh. I go straight up on his. There's a 
could have been taught because I'm just thinking of tongue and mind like something that because your mind kind of speak to yourself but hey you know that's mm. just freestyling <laughs> That sounds good because right heart and tongue do go together like that. So yes. okay. Yes. So as far as freestyle, because I I don't recall off the top of my head what that is. I mean I know it's Ness and then it, but um I'm drawing a blank. But I know afterwards we have Netter E Netra E. Netra E F Washep. It is he who asks. Or he quest, he's questioning something now, right? He asks or he questions. What's up, F? No, we say what's your debt is a question, but when somebody, uh, what does somebody do with the question? Oh, answer. Answer. Yes. Do you answer. Respond. It is he who responds? Something is good. This question. And then it goes again, Sesh Wasir Hat Maheru. Writings, true of voice? Mm, no, um, where are we at? Sesh, no, Sesh, and then Wasir Hat, and then Maheru. Oh. By the scribe. The title and name, and then true of voice. True of voice, yeah. So he was a scribe. First prophet, a WAP priest, <laughs> accountant, accountant, calm, patient, selective of his words. He um, was on a straight and narrow, didn't veer off the path. Mm -hmm. uh, he did something to uh, his deity and who always responded. All right. So I think that's that's enough on on this. Let me go back to the full picture. So the one of the takeaways here is one, you know, that's a good exercise. So definitely everybody, everybody should be proud of themselves to, to walk through that without any books, any um any resources, just looking at the picture on the screen and all that good stuff. But the the takeaway or the the bigger the overall point is that it was claimed that this person in this image is is capable of time travel, but nothing in the text indicates time travel at all this is a person who is an accountant between two kings amenhotep the third and tudang amen um and then some attributes about the person and we get to his wife his wife over here um we sh we can't leave out we can't leave the women out so let's let's um start here uh matter of fact let me go back to the bigger one let's let's actually start here i was just thinking that with jawu i was like let's do it let's do his lady justice Exactly. Can't, can't leave, can't leave wife out. I bet. Okay. All right. Zane got one in. All right. Go ahead, Zane. <laughs> all right, Zane. Okay. Yep. Nabet. Pear. Hesti. Hasi. Uh huh. Hasit. Hut hor. Ni. Hut heru. Favored of Hut heru. Uh huh. What's that one? Songstress of Amun. Yes, but but give us that Egyptology speak. Um, I need to see it. Actually, it's blurry. Well, for me, it's blurry. Is it ah? Uh, Where my arrow is? You translated it correctly. Ah. Uh, shims, shims, sir. Mm -hmm, close. What was the translation again? Songstress of <laughs> Amen. Okay. Uh, I don't know. The is this something to do with Sama or something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Shama. Uh, yeah. There you go. Shama. Mm -hmm. Ni Amen. Songstress of Amen. And then her name, which is what? Dani. <laughs> I thought Donnie would be on it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My mic was muted. Uh, um, Amen. Uh, Neferet. 
Yes. And what's this? Okay, good. What's this word here though? Yes. You uh er mm-hmm. er Uri? Yes. So say the whole whole name together. Uh Amen Neferet Uri. Yes. And people call that Nefertari, Neferet Iri. Or they say Nefertari. Okay. There we have it. My food. And before all that, we got uh Jeanette F. Yes. Before we started in the back. Yep. That's a good uh good point out. Yes, sister. Mm-hmm. And is that a lotus flower above Sinet F? Um, this is a way in the minor period we could double check to say Maheru because it's here as well. Oh, okay. All right, and we can look more into that. But uh Sinet F. Oh yeah, is- yeah. Yeah. Nebet Pair, mistress of the house, Hasid, the one who was favored or chosen of Hut Heru, Hathor, um, Shamani Amen, songstress of Amen, Neferet Iri Macheru, true voice, and that is his wife. So take a good look at them. They are still on planet Earth. They are not time traveling or anything. They're putting their hands up in the uh, position now in this style of artwork they're actually holding their hands up straight 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 in front of them in this artwork one arm looks more extended so when you see people do that they're they're imitating the, the artwork and not the reality of what these two people would be doing their hands would be up right in front of them evenly um and that's it so let me take this uh, image off and any questions or anything? Uh, I, I kind of do, and uh, I don't want y'all to get mad at me or anything like that. But I, I kind of want to re—I don't want to kill the moment either. But may, maybe on a later date, I do want to revisit the character, uh, uh, the character uh, uh, slides that you had, and then. Um, ask some questions about how uh, the rematch actually, uh, as we see, pitching themselves. I, I have some questions, but we could do it later. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll write it down and stuff like that, but yeah. All right, all right. So hopefully um, everybody in the chat participated and learned, you know, learned something. I see the truth is out there. It's definitely going in. I see a couple of things uh, to fine tune, like uh, they have clean, pure Nebet Per, which is which is correct. Um, uh, Hemsit or Hesit, uh, favorite of ha- of Het Heru is correct. Deshret. No, that that red crown in that instance is a, a genitive, genitival, uh, adjectival uh, genitive, which is ni of. So she's the favorite of, and then we have um, Amen, and then you have Neferet Iri, Nefertari, all right? So, yes, yes, yes. So, okay, so the takeaway again, um, there's no time travel with that. So now you know, and so when you see people bring it up or you hear it mentioned, now you can say, no, it's not. You know, hopefully you can refer to this video, refer people to the video, or you can study the video now we did a freestyle. Now, obviously, we wouldn't end here. You, you know, at no at no point would we ever conclude at a freestyle. Obviously, we would crack open the books, double check, triple check, confirm, and and so on and so forth. So, um, so I don't want you to leave here either with like, okay, well, this is what it says. No, <laughs> but one thing we do we know what it doesn't say is that any time travel and things are involved. Uh, that's illogical, just period. You don't have to know anything about Egypt because if the priests were able to time travel, whether whether it's meant that they can disappear and go into the future or the past or even just mentally, um, similar to like remote viewing, then Egypt would pretty much be invincible if they had a whole entourage of priests that could just remote view. That means if the Hittites or, or um, Akkadians or whoever 
came in to, to invade a war, uh, the Romans, the Greeks, the Persians, whoever, they would know. They would know when they're coming, how they're coming, how many, what weapons, and everything. I mean, yeah, we would have we would have only had one dynasty because they just would have went back and took over and kept it going forever. Like we got 17 other dynasties before this one and right. never see anything about anything about time traveling. Right. It's just ridiculous. Exactly, exactly. And then on top of that, the kings would not ask the Seshu Mani Medunetra to research for him on how to do things. And that's where we got our name from. Why, why, why? Just time travel and tell me, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, but, um, I need to do a, a sci-fi edition of the show. Because I remember, I remember them saying that you get, um, they levitated the pyramids so you got that. All right. All right. Hey, you got time traveling. Yeah. I remember like um there was a time where there was a large majority of people who pretty much believed that uh the the rematch were aliens. So now we've got past that where people can separate pseudo stuff. Like when it comes to the aliens, people are like, yeah, really. But then so and and this is why I kind of like like what we do, because it's kind of just, um, you know, sp- you know, what would you call these spookify things and, and you know, just uh, de-pseudify <laughs> stuff, because because at least now people get to see that these are just regular people doing regular stuff, having the regular problems. And we can tell and they documented those so we can tell, you know, that they're regular people. We can tell what they do. Like like even on this daily, it is it's a regular person. It shows this is my wife. And I do this, I am a scribe, you know, I'm an like scribe of accounts, I do accounting, and this is the kind of person, my personality, this is what, you know, what I am, and I've served under these kind of people, so it's just regular stuff, nothing, you know, like how you would see, like, on, on Gaia channels and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right, crazy. So, um, all right, it's, it's midnight, you know, it's Friday. And I don't want to um, extend it this too far than we have to. So hopefully everybody, you know, have fun and, and learned a bit. And again, you know, I think things like this need to be addressed in a in a um, not in a distasteful way or or disrespectful way to anybody who makes these claims. And, you know, I know that um, the elder Mfundishi is respected and beloved in the um, so-called conscious community and everything. Um, so I don't want anybody to walk away and say, okay, well, oh, these guys are hating and whatnot, whatever the case is. Uh, that's not the case. It's just that you have to address it. And so if we have to, if, if people are going to be too sensitive to where you can't address it, then we failed ourselves, you know, and I, and, and as far as on my watch, I just won't, I'm just not having it, you know, it's, that's just not true. All right, that priest that's sitting there, what's her, uh, what's her hot? Is not time traveling for anybody. If if that was the case, he he would have foreseen, he would have foreseen foot to Uncle Amin that he was been murdered or or whatever the case is. I mean, come on, it's just not, it's just not even tenable. It's 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 nonsensical. It doesn't make any sense. That's that's fantasy. That's alien. Uh, what is it? What is it? ancient aliens? That's Gaia. That's um, uh, what's the other shows they watch? Gilligan's Island? I don't know. Yeah, Gilligan's Island. I see uh, 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 Dr. Duarte Odara. <laughs> he said, just passing. Uh, shout out to everybody. Yep. I'll see the archive tomorrow. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, right. And I, I don't want to, you know, and, it, and I never, I don't get into the uh, personal uh, thing or whatever. And that's, that's what this is about. We don't personalize information. You should never identify yourself with information either because you could be wrong or new data could come out to actually change whatever explanation you understood at, at your particular point. And if you identify with that and then that gets destroyed, then, it, then it's equivalent to destroying you and people get defensive. And that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to identify with information. 
Information is something that is fluid. You know, as a scientist, you're constantly seeking reality and you are constantly making adjustments. You know, it's, it's just as simple as that. And scientists are OK with saying they don't know. And I'm going to give an example. So let's change up a bit. Who on the panel? OK, is everybody on the panel familiar with dark matter or dark energy? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what is it? Nobody knows. I don't know. know. It's just there. Oh, I heard somebody say, I know, but I hope that's not. Well, yeah, it's it's not that they don't necessarily know, but they don't know exactly what it is. This new Eru said he know what it is. (laughs) You don't know, is it the impossible? (laughs) No, 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 no. No, you can Google it. <laughs> no, it's, so all right, so let me let me just say this about dark the reason why I asked that question. So um physicists, astrophysicists and and the likes, they they call something dark energy and dark matter. What it is though is that's a misnomer. First of all, let's start there. Dark energy, dark matter is a misnomer. What it actually is, is a, is a um, discrepancy in a calculation. That's all it is. And, and, and in a nutshell, what it is that the known matter in the universe should have a certain um, gravitational pull or gravitation to it. But they notice that it doesn't. So there's other matter out there that's affecting and throwing these numbers off and that discrepancy is being called dark matter even though they don't know whether it actually is matter so that's why people like neil degrasse tyson will will say in a heartbeat that that's that's a misnomer because they don't know what it is except the fact that it's a it represents a mathematical discrepancy in in the um, gravitation gravitational pull that should be there that's not and that's it now i i I brought that up because as an example what i said right before that was scientists do not mind not knowing because the ignorance of scientists or or the actual not knowing part is what drives science because think about it if you knew then you don't have to pursue knowledge. You already know. And scientists are always seeking to know and they're always refining explanations based on new evidence. Science is a domain of evidence. It's evidence-based. Evidence drives science. Um, logic drives math. And together between uh, science and math, they, you know, we, we are where we are in the world. Uh, let me, let me say what? I want to say one thing real quick because uh, I'm about to go back on mute, but you did a good job of demonstrating that uh, this this last two weeks. So, you know, for real, you, you did that. Okay. That's all I'm I appreciate, appreciate that. Well, John, what about all the scientists that they, you know, that they did recognize that they, you know, like basically killed a knowledge and stole it or whatever, like Tesla for one. You know, that's just one, though. But there's been many famous scientists that die, or mathematicians or whatever, that die being suppressed by other scientists. Um, well, if you... If I you, mean, if you, hundreds of them, though, y'all. I'm talking about going to the crazy house, living in asylums, dying of, you know, like, uh, starvation, you know. Yeah, well, well... That that happens still to this day, not at that extreme, though, because um, there are people who because of society, the way the social pressures are. So, for example, I forget and somebody can correct me, but um, I believe it was Galileo or someone around that caliber was okay. the one who one who um, dealt with the um, um, the sun being in the center instead of the um, earthly earth centric um, model, he dealt with the heliocentric model 
And I may be, I may have the person wrong. No, was, no I think you're right. It was Galileo. Yeah. Okay. And so he was ridiculed. He he was ridiculed and threatened um, for that. And so yeah. and so and so that's not that's not something that's um that's new. It happens all the time. It it ha- it happens all the time. And so these social pressures um, and things, and that's why science is evidence based and it changes. You know, um, even Einstein, uh, between Newton and Einstein, hey. I, it, it's it's a uh, uh, Einstein's theory of or explanation of gravity and Newton's explanation or theory of relativity, um, and all now, that. Good Einstein's stuff. theory that's the other way around. And, and Newton's theory of just regular phys- physical physical science. But I'm with you. Know, you. It was Newton's. Yeah, it was Newton's universal gravitational law. Okay, yeah. I had them switch. So, yeah, so relativity. Okay, so, so, but, but the whole, I guess the whole point of of tying into what I started out with is that science is a very fluid discipline, and it's always based on the the current available um, evidence, the data, the evidence, the testing, the reviewing, the reanalysis, and so on and so forth. They're always checking and rechecking and checking and rechecking. And and that's just how it works. So we should not go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying we so we should be comfortable with not knowing. And that and we should we should transfer that or use that as fuel to go seek, you know, to to actually pursue. We're supposed to pursue knowledge, as they say, from the cradle to the grave. And that's this that pursuit that makes nobody perfect. See, when, when people say nobody's perfect. That's an actual true statement because of what per- perfect me- perfect means. It means to be complete. And you're never going to be complete until you're dead. So the only complete human beings are dead ones. When you're alive, you're constantly in pursuit of completion. And that, com- that com- pursuit of completion involves experience, um, which is knowledge that, that, you're, that you're going through life, waking up each and every day, learning, engaging, interacting, learning, engaging, interacting, gaining knowledge, expanding. And then when you're dead, obviously you're finished, you're completed, you're done. That's the grand total at the end of the receipt. And that's it. Yeah, because when you think about it, if you was complete, your body wouldn't try to generate new cells. Yeah, we have 37 trillion cells in our body at any given time. And they're constantly dying off, replenishing, dying off, replenishing, dying off, replenishing. That's true. Yep. That is true. Cells are dying right now as we all of us sitting here and getting replenished. Yep. And I think it takes um, for all 37 trillion. Now, 37 trillion cells are not going to all die at once and then, and then, you know, get replaced when you wake up. But I think the estimate, and I don't even know how they came up with this estimate, but the the 37 trillion cells renewing each other, I think it takes a couple of years. And I forget, I'm going to look that up again. I used to know that. Yeah, I think like depending on um, each system of the body, like from your skin to your bones, mm-hmm. your muscle, they have different days of renewing. Since you mentioned bones, right? What what do we absolutely know of the human being that has an afterlife? Uh, the bones, I guess. Yeah, fossils. The bones. So, so the skeletal system in the body has an afterlife because once a person is dead, that skeletal system will continue its skeletal existence. Yeah, they live as long as stone. Mm-hmm. There you go. So anyway, um, anybody got anything else? I I stick around for thirteen more minutes. Twelve thirty. We are definitely doing a hard stop. Twelve thirty. <laughs> well, I still I still got a question about um uh, um. So did you did you answer my question or were you what were you? You know, 
Oh, what what was? Oh, you mean you mean about the scientist dying off? Yeah, like you know, I was just trying to say like because I feel like in a lot of ways scientists reject a lot of truth and proof even before they face you know like I mean like I know I have solutions to problems that I done presented at universities and you know that's another day you said you would give me a day on the mathematics I'm waiting on that day uh, but you know like that like certain mathematical things that have been presented to them they refuse and they reject like what? even good things like I, I, I name one crazy like for instance it's other ways to type in a calculator that would be much more efficient and much more better than, much better than QWERTY, but yet they stick to QWERTY. You said oh, I'm type in a calculator? No, nah, computer. I said, it's, yeah, it's more, it's better system for a, 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 a what you will call that, would you a, a typing system or typing pad? Well, a keyboard, you know. The, a the keyboard, range. yeah, fact. that's range. right. The arrangements of the keyboard is usually in this country a quart a QWERTY uh, keyboard, and that and that got its name from the um, top left out letters, Q W E R T Y, QWERTY. But that's more of preference though, because there 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 are other keyboards that don't that are not QWERTY. I've 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 seen keyboards that are split in half, and they're not. It's just it's it's almost like this. Like right now in in the United States, we use the um the inch and and foot system. Uh, forget what they call that. And then, but we were, we at the one point. I, no, 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 it, no. The the standard system. And I remember in school, I remember I think it was when Ronald Reagan was president. I think we were going to switch. The country was going to switch to the metric system, but we never did. And when we had to learn it, millimeters, centimeters, and all of that good stuff, but we never switched over uh, to that. Well, and actually, so they made the consent to switch over, but they never really did switch over. But right, they did sign an agreement that they would. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it never switched over yeah. in school to where it became the standard. And that's why we still yeah. speak in inches and, and foot and all that good stuff. So and yards instead of meters but we'll do in the olympics and say 100 meters and and this and that so so it exists so I'm, I'm i'm saying that to say that 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 example that's more of a social preference type thing and not really um science like that science but science you know, has gotten a lot better because see when you go in the past that's why i brought up galileo because you you start going in the past new ideas was frowned upon you know, that's, I, that's, I don't get that by scientists, though. Not well, only by the church, but by science. Not necessarily, though, because because a lot, of, a lot of science was restricted because of the ex, external to science type of things. Either either the state, it may, it may not have been religion or the church, but it was the state. Remember, this church and state. And then you had um, then you had the oligarchs. The people with the money, so so we can't blame it on science itself. Within science, it, it has a lot of external pressures that that offer that suppression. Because remember, if a if a new scientific discovery is going to mess up somebody's pockets, those those oligarchs and those people with with the deep pockets and the elite aristocrats or whatever whatever, they're going to suppress it, hands down. Like for example. The owner. I mean, of that's one. That's one way, Ruja. I mean, all those are many ways that you name it. But we were specifically talking about science. No, um, and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying and the science majority. and how scientists scientists suppress other scientists. Like you could look on, you could look all over the internet right now. It's thousands of PhDs that saying that they their experiments are being rejected. Their knowledge is not being accepted. They don't know where to go. They have cures. They have antidotes. They don't know what to do. Why is the world like this? You can look all over YouTube and see. But but what I'm what I'm trying to express is that that's not rejection. That's not suppression in the in the way that we understand it. It's there are methods that are should be followed. Like for example, RCT, randomized control trials, is the is the par excellence 
um, standard for medical advancement. So if a PhD, even though they have a PhD, if they have not um, extrapolated data from an RCT, it's not going to be readily accepted like that because of the power of, of randomized controlled trials, randomized placebo controlled trials that include a placebo at that. Some of them are blind. Some of them are double blind. No. And, and so no, 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 those are superior. See, in science, you, you have superior methods. So I'm, I'm going to give you a quick example. I'm going to be fast as I can. So here's, a, here's another example. In science, eyewitness testimony, just because somebody sees something, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the lowest form of evidence in science. But guess what? In the court of law, eyewitness testimony is very high in value and 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 um taken to heart in in a court of law so it depends on the on the superiority and the application of whatever's going on so a lot of these PA, these people who will say that their stuff is being suppressed or whatever case is what they're not saying when they complain is why why is it and and so that's when you get into conspiracy theories like okay they must be suppressing it because they're on to something or this and that, but they're not actually explaining um, why. Why is that being um, rejected? Because I'm, as far as medical stuff, I'm, I'm familiar with, at least with this pandemic, because people are trying to cite anecdotal experiences as if it's the science. And that's just, you never do that in medicine. Saba, what about the people that have, uh, like- I mean, look at Dr. Stevie. I'm sorry, brother, go ahead. Now you go ahead. I'm sorry. I just had to interject. People that, that have come up with certain cures and things that uh, some people's uh, things have been bought out by pharmaceutical companies because they don't want that to get out because it messes up their bottom line. So some of these things never, ever get to that trial, trial period because they're bought out by the pharmaceutical companies. Okay. Yeah, that's... And that's and that's what happens. So, for example, that that happens in a lot of um, big companies. So and I'm not saying Apple did this, but just to give an example, Apple may buy out a another cell phone type of model structure and, and whatever, buy them out just so they won't uh, emerge as a as a competitor. No. You know, that that yeah. happens. Yeah, I think I, most of I understand that. That's competition. That's business competition. That's about they ain't even gotta never produce that item. I respect that. But I, but it could it could it could it, but but it it it, it, okay. it could involve it could have involved scientific breakthroughs. Let's say let's say the phone was yes, it could. Uh, was, was and that's seven, a way that Apple suppresses other science. Was so let's say the phone was seven G and 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 the battery life was like a month. <laughs> Yeah, I think um yeah, when we look at, uh, through, through like um history and stuff, I think more of what would uh possibly happen is it's not really about suppressing, but it's about who wants to be first at something. Either way, it's coming out, it's not getting suppressed. Now, when you're talking about people complaining on YouTube, like that would just be off because um in this time and age, um that's actually you wouldn't think a scientist would go and complain on YouTube. You, you know, you can patent your own stuff. You can have GoFundMe if it's about uh, money. But so complaining, I think most of the time is about like Bujao was saying, they must have, um, you know, um, not the methods that were used must have not been approved. And then people always, you know, explain their part, their point of view as, you know, I'm being suppressed. And sometimes people actually use that, you know, as a, as a PR thing, you know, to get something else out of once um, something has not been approved where they were hoping it would be approved. And it didn't work out. Then the, you know it's a, it's good PR because people like the underdog. You know it works. Um, God is Maquette, greetings, peace. I just want to ask you this though. Like I'm I'm a mathematician, and I have inventions as well as mathematical proofs that I would like to share, and that I have been before university professors and presidents and provosts and principals and superintendents school teachers and different things like that. And for the most part, everybody agreed that it was correct. But when I attempted to move further, I was suppressed. 
I was, you know, I only want to discuss right now because this wouldn't be appropriate, but certain things were done, phone calls were made, all type of things were done to suppress what I'm doing. What is it that you need them for? Um, if you say it works, what, what is it that you're trying to need from those people that you can't move without them approving it? Okay, let me show you something. Did you know that there's no textbooks being written, uh, uh, um, no calculators made in the United States, no calculations, just like what y'all was talking about, about the measurement. There's no measurements or anything done with calculators or anything like that in the United States. Uh, you gonna have to. What does that mean? To expound, because I, I, I got. I'm saying, I'm saying that right, even right, the calculator right. at Google, even the calculator at Google, come from Japan. I'm saying that even the calculator from from Texas Instrument, from everywhere, they calculations, they mathematics, it's all approved in places like Geneva, Singapore. It's not approved in the United States. Are we talking about? technology or are we talking about like mathematics applied mathematics okay. true mathematics i'm talking like, about talking i'm about? talking about the actual i'm talking about the actual entries into a calculator whether the answer is right or wrong so you're talking about it's, computer it's science people that, it's people no I, that's low but yeah it's people that set the standard bro it's it, it's corporation big time corporation like the dod they be parts of things like that and they set the standard for um, where the calculator will where the calculator will read. Like for instance, if I said 10 divided by three, the answer could be 3.33333. Okay, and then if I multiply 3.333 times three, now my answer could be 9.99999, or my answer could be 10. It could be rounded up or, or called 10. So in your calculator right now, you're gonna read 10. A long time ago, it would read 9.999. It's people that set the standard for what going to calculate. So if I want to put something in a calculator, I can't just make a calculator and throw it out there. Ain't nobody going to buy or be studying my calculator. They're going to say, you're going to say the same thing you said to me now. How come they, the beast, hasn't approved your calculator so I can accept it? How come you haven't taken it through the white man's system and got him to approve it? Cause I ain't got no power to approve it and I can't use it cause he hasn't approved. Are you trying to say that at this point you have, you created, have you um, created a physical calculator that does that? Or, or you want um, somebody to find you to get, uh, to, to create that calculator and then have it checked and approved. No, it's according to what you mean by physical mathematically on paper facts. I have I have created a computer and calculator that can do that. That can do things that other calculators and computers can't do. For instance, like divide by zero. And Any so you can, by zero. you can't sell it. To, you can't have people using it because um, it's not approved. Right now, if I went before any scientist or mathematician, now no, I'm talking about time, regular. Oh, sorry to interrupt you. My question is, I you know Go you ahead. can't sell it. Go to, ahead. It can be used by the regular folks because it's not approved by um, the scientists. Let me explain. Give me just one second to explain it. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm gonna let you. I'm let you explain this. Hold on one second. I'm gonna let you explain, but we're gonna end it right after your explanation because I, I said I'm gonna do a hard stop at twelve thirty, but I don't want to be rude. So you know, so uh, you can feel free to explain, but we're gonna um, end the show after that. Okay, if I took this mathematics or this calculator and this thing like I have done, if I take it before, um, let's say Casio, Casio uh, Texas Instrument, they'll say, we don't get to choose the mathematics that go into a computer, so you can't bring it to us. If you take it to a university, they'll say, well, we don't get to choose what go in a calculator or determine how calculators work. So there are certain blocks up in getting things like that done. So if I was to go before any mathematician. Now, this is how the system works. Now, I'm showing you three levels on another level after level. If I were to go to mathematicians or scientists and say, 
zero divided by zero is new, and any number divided by zero is on, those numbers are now determined and determined and defined, and I can use them completely in any calculator and computer, and they can be programmed into any calculator and computer consistently and completely without error. They'll say, no, you're wrong. Zero divided by zero is undefined. That's what we all know. And no number can be divided by zero. That's what we all know. You could even type that in a calculator. It'll say undefined mm -hmm. and indeterminate. That's what we all know. So it's a group of people <laughs> that's got a group of, another group of people saying exactly what they want them to say. So on all levels, when people tell you there's a conspiracy, I heard what y'all said earlier, people don't really be able to explain basically what it is. Well, I'm explaining to you exactly what those blocks are and what, what, what certain people with genuine things to offer humanity and technology are, are being blocked from. And the last thing, the last point, when, when the brother with y'all talked about um, can, um, about computers and about limit, limitations or whatever, I just want to say this, that they have limitations on computers concerning prime numbers. Prime numbers are, the, are put into binary code, and that's basically the cryptography for computers. Now, with that said, basically the banking system and all of the emails, monetary email, all that is based on this cryptography and the, the, the security of it and the protection of it is based on the fact that nobody is supposedly supposed to be able to factor numbers or factor primes efficiently or uh, quickly yeah. enough. So last thing, which I'm gonna say this, is it. So nobody's supposed to be able to factor primes quickly enough. So the, the thing is though, they going off of a shortcoming of humanity, a, a, a disability of humanity, not to be able to factor primes, and they're using that as security. So if anybody in humanity figured out a way to factor primes, they'll suppress or kill that person because the whole security and the banking system is going smooth. Why would we ruin that until we get quantum computers and then that Negro could come out with anything he wants? But I'm done with y'all. But thank you, Goddess Emma Cat, for allowing me to say that. Okay, I, I was just going to suggest, um, in closing, <laughs> uh, to suggest that with what you um, possess, what you feel that you, you have um, available to you and everything like that, that you get into. And I'm not saying this to start another conversation. I'm saying you should, you should probably take a look at um, crypto, the blockchain and crypto currency and its algorithms and things of that nature um because that's the area where um people not a lot of people are um into i mean a lot of people are but then there's a whole lot of people who are not you know, it's fairly new even though the blockchain as far as bitcoin starting happened some time ago to what 2009 when it first the first uh blockchain uh with bitcoin but regardless um that would be a good area for um, a lot of people that are heavily into math because uh, the blockchain, the, the immutable ledger and all of its algorithms and, and um, security um, things where it cannot be changed. And this and that is, is like, you know, a ocean for, for people who are into math and things. That's like, you know, I know, I know, I know if I had a focus in math, that's exactly where I would be. Something dealing with um, crypto, whether it's cryptocurrency or or just the ledger, blockchain period, or even um, hash graph, whatever. That's that's for the mathematicians for real. Yeah, but my yeah, I was thinking that with uh, academia, that's my love. That, so that's what I like to do. My mathematics is for my people, and I feel like it'll change the way they think and the way they see things in the world. But I do, I do work with cryptography. And I have looked at the blockchain and different things like that. But what I found is it takes a lot of blockchain money to even get involved on that level of um, security or dealing with anything cryptographic. You got to basically build your own because everybody got their own system closed. 
But you know what, uh, Nuheru, you are actually living in a perfect time to be able to do things that you want without actually having to go through and get the approval of academia. Sometimes I think people try to just, um, you know, try all the way from the top as opposed to starting small. So, you know, just, you know, there are other avenues that you could, you know, start over, start from, you know, instead of trying to get that approval if if what you're doing is I'll very interesting. I'll put myself on mute all after right, this. All right, all right. I'll so put myself I'll on say, mute after right. this. I yeah, just no, want to no, say one no, thing no, to no, Gattis no, Demacay. Please. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm going to say, I'm going to end the show. I, I appreciate everybody um, tuning in. Um, and, you know, hopefully people had a takeaway from, from this fun exercise on Freestyle Friday. This is the kind of um, things we do. We did it for about two years straight, year and a half straight, nonstop, every Friday, every Wednesday, Divine Words Wednesdays. But now we kind of mix it all up. So hopefully, you know, this was actually a combination of the Sabait Dome and Freestyle Friday where we address a claim and we freestyled at the same time. So again, lastly, um, the priest, uh, what's, her, uh, what's her hot in, in the picture we showed? He is not a time traveler. He's an actual accountant. I mean, to go from an accountant to a time traveler, boy, that's a that's a big shift in job description. You know, imagine you fill out a resume and you, and you have, you know, uh, 2012, I was an accountant, 2019, time traveler. <laughs> They'd be like, you're hired. <laughs> you're overqualified. You no. Know? But anyway, um, peace to the panel. Uh, I, I appreciate everybody on the panel giving um, interaction and peace to the chat. Uh, again, you know, we don't have a habit, at least me, I actually forget that we um, act like I don't even make announcements for things we have going on. We have classes going on. We have the links that are in all the descriptions of, of the um, videos. We have super chat activated if people want to support and whatnot and, and all of that good stuff. But, I, you know, me, I'm not used to doing that. So I, I forget. I, I just happen to look at the chat and, and remember that, OK, we got super chat, you know. Um, so I got to, you know, we got to incorporate that so people at least know what's going on. And um, and anybody who wants to participate, want to take the class, a beginner's class um, and some other things we have going on. You know, we got we just got to let everybody know. So I, I have to get better at um, letting, it, letting those things be known. So with that, I'm going to say Shimim Hotep and oh, uh, yeah, that's it. Shimim Hotep and Garena Fair. I'm not doing that that long winded uh goodbyes uh i know people were just waiting just waiting for me to have a whole another hour but nope so shimmy hotep and i'll see y'all uh probably tomorrow so shimmy hotep